Hello everyone, welcome to Super Tech Mario. Today I'm gonna share with you my it just works experience of the iPhone 12. Let me start off by saying that this is my first iPhone and I really tried and wanted to like it. My experience overall has been a bit meh and after the initial excitement of unboxing a brand new device wore off, I found myself never reaching for it. Let's start off with the good things though. The iPhone 12 running on iOS 14 is in my opinion the best iPhone experience Apple has put out. The weight, dimensions and box-like design all come together nicely and make the phone feel really well balanced and premium. It doesn't have any sharp edges, but it doesn't fit in my hand with the same gracefulness as the unibody aluminum build of the Pixel 5. The flat aluminum frame though, does make for a great typing experience when pressing on it with your index fingers to keep it secure, and the haptic feedback is amazing when using the Google keyboard. The back of the phone is still glass, a fingerprint magnet and the camera housing doesn't protrude as much although I still don't feel comfortable laying it on a table without a case. Moving on to the front of the phone and this is where things start to get complicated. All iPhone 12 models have the same slightly higher than 1080p OLED screen with the only difference being the size and the brightness. The display is still plenty bright on the 12 so I wouldn't worry about it too much. What looks dated though are the bezels. Yes they are uniform all around with the exception of the notch but the side bezels are almost twice as thick as the 350 pound Pixel 4a and I do notice them in day to day use especially when consuming video content. But my main issue is that the notch remains the same size. I can say that it doesn't bother me as much in portrait mode. When watching video on the other hand I always prefer to have black bars left and right rather than zooming in to fill the screen as I just can't stop staring at the notch when doing so. It's just not as an immersive experience when compared to almost any other Android flagship. The speakers are stereo, sound rich, but the bass is close to non-existent. Now, everyone loves stating that the A14 is the best processor you can find on a mobile device and that it destroys the competition in every way possible. Before I go on my rant, I just want to say that yes, it does launch apps almost instantly. It can game at 60 FPS with all settings cranked up without breaking a sweat and keeps most of the apps in memory while maintaining low temperatures. So why would I dare say that it feels significantly slower to use than the Pixel 5 which has a processor with almost half the performance on paper. This is unfortunately due to both hardware and software limitations on the iPhone. One being the lack of a high refresh rate and the other being iOS and how it operates. It feels as if it wants you to take your time and think about what you're gonna use the phone for before you actually use it. The main issue I've come across is that in order for any action to be executed, all previous animations must come to a stop. Want to open an app in a folder, you need to wait out the folder animation and then launch the app. Do it too fast and iOS won't register your touch input. Want to swipe between the app drawer and the home screen? Make sure that you've stopped scrolling through the drawer and then swipe back. The gesture system in general is a bit hot mess. Let's start with the basics. The so-called home gesture doesn't even take you home. If you open a folder and then launch the app, when you swipe to go home, it takes you back to the last open folder. Then you need to click anywhere outside the folder to go home. Want to access the control center? Swipe down from the top right corner of the phone. Simple. Want to access your notifications? Swipe down from the top left corner of the phone. And thus we complete our daily hand gymnastics. Also, why does iOS show me different notifications in my notification center than it does in my lock screen? I'll give them props for face unlock though. It's actually great and the way it unlocks notifications works seamlessly every time I pick up the phone, in a way prompting you to take action on your recent notifications. Other than that though, grouping, checking, dismissing and clearing notifications is all done in a very tedious manner. Then we have the multitask view which still doesn't have a clear button and lacks any sort of split screen mode. All these I could live with, but the back gesture. 
single-handedly the worst thing about iOS and needs to be either removed or fixed immediately. The fact that it's not consistent throughout the OS and the apps drives me insane. It's like you're playing guessing games with your phones. Basically, if a back arrow appears on the top left of the screen, the back gesture will work for the majority of the times. If there is an X on the top right of the screen, the back gesture will not work. Oh, what's that? You want the on-screen keyboard to go away? Yeah, sometimes you can swipe down, but not always. Just look for the X if it doesn't work. It's easy, guys. The X button is on the top right of the screen and the back button is on the top left of the screen. When the X button doesn't work, the back button won't work. And when that doesn't work, then the back gesture will work. And then yeah, it's just, it just works. Oh, and picture in picture doesn't work in any of the apps I use like WhatsApp, Messenger, YouTube, and Google Maps. So I don't know why they even bothered adding it in. Oh yeah, I know, I know, there's a workaround. Let, let me just show you the workaround real fast. It just works. Add all of this to the fact that you're still using a 60 Hertz display and everything feels so much choppier. It just works. All right, let's talk about the battery now. I'm not gonna beat a dead horse here. It doesn't come with a charger and we all know it's just a way for Apple to make more money. The phone charges quite fast if you buy a third party USB-C charger and the battery experience is great. iPhones have good standby time and tend to manage the battery well enough even though they have smaller battery cells than the competition. If 5G turns on though, things get significantly worse, so keep that in mind. Now the camera experience is solid overall. When compared to the Pixel 5, I still prefer the Pixel as the pictures are always closer to what my eyes could see at the time. The iPhone goes for a more dramatic HDR look and adds a warm yellowish hue, which I'm not a fan of. You now finally have the ability to use night mode with all lenses and you get consistent results from all of them. The iPhone's color temperature continues to be slightly off and fails to capture as much information as the Pixel. Take this picture for example. Initially, the iPhone seems to be more impressive, but when you take a closer look, you can see that the iPhone fails to capture any details from the sky and completely crushes the shadow detail. The Pixel on the other hand is a bit more noisy, but captures a lot more information. Even in video, the iPhone used to be the champ, but the Pixel right now can keep up with it even at night. Which phone has better mics? Switching to the ultra wide. Back to the normal. And back to the ultra wide. So what does the iPhone offer over the competition? In my opinion, apart from being the video recording and editing champ, it doesn't do much to earn a recommendation. I haven't witnessed any so-called optimization benefits over my Pixel. On the contrary, I've experienced more bugs and hiccups than any other Android phone I've used in the past three years. If you're in the ecosystem already, I would still keep away from it. Apple users tend to keep their iPhones for a long time. And the iPhone 12 is missing what I believe to be a key feature for daily interaction with your phone. It's the high refresh display. Now, I don't know if next year only the pros are gonna get it and how much it's gonna cost, but unless you're coming from an iPhone 8, I would say wait another year. This for Super Tech Mario, like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.